Uh, so I'm Naz Shah, I'm the member of parliament for Bradford West and I'm a member of the Home Affairs Select Committee here in parliament. For me, because I'm a bit more thick-skinned and uh, I, because of my life experiences, it's kind of like, um, is it, it's, it's not water off, water off a duck's back, but it has to be. Um, because the, the job is much far, far more important than the trolling and the abuse that I get. You know, to be able to have a voice for my constituents outweighs the kind of abuse that I get on a personal level. Um, it's not something that I would... Um, uh, would I would I reconsider? No, I, I'd still do what I do, uh, but that's because it's my nature. But should you have to do what I do, uh, should you have to experience that? And the answer is no. no nobody should have to experience that kind of abuse. Mm -hmm. Well, it is clear from the research that toxic abuse is more leveled towards uh, women than men, and then if you add race to the remix, it's even, it gets a bit more toxic, and then you add religion to the mix, and then it gets a bit more toxic. So there's kind of like a hierarchy, if you like, of who gets most abuse. Uh, I'd agree that um, whilst you can, you can and you should be able to remain anonymous online because of, you know, you, you want to do that, the truth is that Twitter and Facebook and Google, etc. need to know who those people are. Uh, because if, you know, there's, there's an element of freedom of speech and freedom of speech has its space, but freedom of speech doesn't allow you to have freedom of abuse. It's a responsibility of users, it's a responsibility of tech companies, and it's a responsibility of the government. So you can't just walk in the street and shout abuse at somebody and decide to smack them in the face just because you want to. And why should you be able to do it anonymously on Twitter? And, you know, because it is a virtual second world. It's a second world, which is a parallel world to, to the mainstream world of you and I sat here talking and uh, having a virtual conversation online. And if you look at the police for the, for policing for the future, so we're also doing an inquiry, inquiry into policing uh, for the future, and some of the dynamics that are impacting on those investigations. So there was a time where you'd have to be in a physical presence for the police. You know, for somebody, would I'd threaten somebody, you'd threaten somebody, it'd have to be a physical threat or on the phone. But now you can do it over Facebook, you can do it over social media, you can threaten to rape somebody over social media. And the whole dynamic of policing and responses to that has changed. So there's a huge amount of work to be done and we're very far behind of where we need to be.